Hello and welcome to Study with Sudhir. And this is going to be a rather different interview because this features Mrinal Kuteri, the All India Rank number one in NEET. Uh, Mrinal uh, has been known to us for the past many years. In fact, uh, ever since he was in class five, uh, my daughter Tejaswini, who was his classmate at Geetanjali Devshala here in Hyderabad, uh, they studied together from class five to class 10. So in that sense, this is going to be a different interview, a more personal kind of interaction. Manal, many congratulations. Extremely delighted to Thank you. hear about your achievement. Uh, has it sunk in? Did you spend a sleepless night uh, yesterday uh, or uh, were you tossing yeah. around in bed? I mean, yesterday it was almost 1, 1.30, I think, by the time I went to sleep. And today morning also I had to wake up a little early. So I think, yes, it's yet to sink in. It all feels a little, you know, unreal, surreal kind of thing right now. <laughs> like okay. kind of overwhelming. Right. Teju, please take over. So we spoke on uh, the 12th of September evening once you finished giving your need paper. And, uh, right then you knew that you're going to get a 700 plus. So well, it was our long expected lines, isn't it? Um, I mean, once the key came out and all, it kind of, I mean, I was hoping for a good rank. I mean, I never expected one, but it's the best possible. But after the exam, actually, there are, you know, quite a few questions that can go either way, right? Like, uh, it appears to you that two options are correct. You have to commit to one, though. So, those, uh, there were a few questions like that. So, I wasn't really sure how well I'd done. I mean, I was hoping for a decent score and rank, but this was a little beyond my imagination at that time. Once the key and OMR and all was released, uh, seeing my score, I was pretty happy and hoping for a good rank. But one is still a little uh, well beyond my expectations, actually. So, Well, Brunal, you have been an achiever all through. I mean, you have been a school topper all through. You were the ICSC Telangana topper in 2019. Uh, you have done very well. But NEAT, in that sense, takes the cake because there are, what, 16 lakh plus aspirants. So in that sense, it's not an easy exam uh, by any stretch of imagination. There are many who actually drop a year in order to prepare for it. So what was your entire mental makeup through the journey, especially in the last COVID year, while you were preparing for this big ticket examination? Uh, for me, right from 11th grade, like when I started, for me, my uh, main primary goal was always to avoid stress and pressure because I don't perform well under pressure. I'm not MS Dhoni or something. So I know my limitations. I can't do the well if it's a stressful, you know, high stakes kind of situation. So for me, right from the beginning, it was always about, you know, minimizing the, the you know, like don't try and get too lost in how much is at stake here kind of thing. And I think there I've had the support of everyone, my family, my friends, my teachers from school and from Akash. So they've all helped me actually to, you know, not get so caught up in how big an exam this is. Like now when I think about, yes, you know, 16 lakh students, it determines your college. There's a lot at stake. But then for those two years, I did my best not to think about that a lot because um, I, in all the exams I've written, if I was not in the right frame of mind, I messed it up. But if I was calm, I was able to do to the best of my ability. So for me, those two years were about that. And uh, with the pandemic, actually, new complications came in. Of course, it was uh, very easy to get distracted. This is when you also can vouch for. I have way too many hobbies to let go of, really. So that way, uh, yeah, it was a little difficult. There was definitely an adjustment period in the beginning. But, you know, with time, it got a little better. I know it for a fact that, I mean, you are into deb debating. Uh, you are into football. You play cricket. And uh, in that sense, uh, you are a man, a boy who has a lot many hobbies, including cuisine. <laughs> Uh, in which we collaborated yeah, yeah. Uh, a few years ago. Uh, how much of all that did you do in the last two years? Um, quizzing and all actually that stopped after 10th because 11th and 12th, you know, unless you're going through college, there aren't many opportunities. Uh, sports, once in a while I used to play, like uh, table tennis, I played once in a while to, you know, unwind a, a little. Apart from that, obviously, when the pandemic struck, like everyone else, I got hooked on to, uh, you know, Netflix Prime Video. That became my primary source of entertainment and, you know, relaxation for those, for the last one and a half years, at least. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and I'm very happy that I did not let go of those things because those were the things which kept me happy and in the right frame of mind to study and, you know, perform in the exam. I, I wonder... person who used to, you know 
so well he balances academics and you know watching the latest episodes of friends and he'll balance everything so well uh, he would play the guitar he'll be you know all the time saying i'm learning this song on the guitar and then he'll be you know doing well in his academics he's that perfect role model of you know how to balance academics and extracurriculars but those who are listening to you mrinal right now would wonder whether uh, netflix is a route to reach to neat <laughs> i'm not saying um, it's not like you know netflix had a direct role in my success like in the sense i learned uh, you know from netflix it's not like that but as i mentioned for me uh, the my prime objective during preparation was to stay calm and in yeah. that one day i truly believe that you know netflix and prime video and all that so, helped me so you're uh, saying that even if one watches all that kind of source of entertainment it's okay so long as you stay focused during the hours that you are focus uh, devoting to your academics exactly. and you know netflix and prime video is more symbolic i'm not saying it's just that that was my source of entertainment you mentioned something yeah. else Game, yeah. dancing video games there are many different hobbies right uh, what i mean to say is if you have a hobby you don't have to let go of it you know give time to that so that you are in the right frame of mind when you study you are one person who i have always admired for your time management that you manage your time pretty well now there are a whole lot of students who keep asking you know we need to have the perfect time table and i keep saying that there is no one time table fits all you need to tweak it according to what kind of person you are what kind of student you are now throw right. some light into the kind of typical day uh, that you led especially in the last one and a half years of covid at home i have actually tried a lot to you know set one time table and kind of stick to that uh, my mm-hmm. diary uh, like half of it is just you know time tables that i've revised at different points of time like this didn't work so i was i tried something else but not i can't put one instance where i was able to stick to it so that way i understood that time management is it does not work that way for me like it's not the you know i micromanage my day that this time i have to do this this time it's that it's, i didn't micromanage like that i had a goal like you know these this much i have to finish in a day and i didn't finish that every time either but with a goal in mind i gave myself the flexibility to work towards that the way i wanted not necessarily according to a time table because each day is different na i mean like suppose you got a call from someone else and you you never know what may come up yeah. and if you set a time table and you can't stick to that because of what whatever the circumstance you unnecessarily feel you know disappointed in yourself and then it leads to that vortex of self doubt and all those other negative feelings so that's why i found it best to you know avoid that whole concept of time tables i just try to go with a daily goal in mind you mentioned this whole thing of negativity now that you know we, we I used to have this school diary where he used to write, "Okay, fine, these are the things I want to do. I have to do after I go back home." So you know, he had the, he had this to-do yeah, list yeah. complete. So being systematic helps. But uh, tell me, you mentioned about negativity. Now there would be many moments when you would feel uh, self doubt. How would you deal? Yeah. I know for a fact that your parents, Manal and Rethi, are very uh, Murli and Rethi are very cool kind of uh, uh, parents, but. when you had those kind of moments of self doubt will i be able to do this will i be able to crack this how would you deal with it how would your ecosystem of your family help you deal with it i'd say this is where you know kind of faith in yourself and you know the faith in you that's displayed by your family friends teachers all comes into play like i've had i've had many a bad exam of course uh, you know a bad day when i wasn't able to study even close to what i had planned so you know days like that it's very easy to you know fall into that uh, you know that that quick sand kind of thing it is it pulls you in and if you fall in it's very difficult to you know claw your way back out so uh, there i think i have been very lucky to have supportive family friends and teachers but uh, one thing i believe is you know you should have faith in yourself and um, it's okay like uh, it does not mean that you have to follow what others are doing everyone mm. has different methods of preparation still everyone has good days and bad days so for you it's the same way your story is different from you know this year's topper or last year's topper yes. it's different yes. don't agree and judge yourself according to someone else's yardstick so just yes. you know have faith in yourself and believe that you know the effort that you're putting in it is going to bear fruit one day maybe not today maybe not tomorrow but one day it will uh, so and uh, of course the support system you have i think these things are what 
you know help you stay motivated i think that's a very important thing that you said yeah your story is different that my story cannot be the same as someone else's story you need to write your own script that's a very important thing that you said how many mock tests would you really attend because that's another thing which many students have uh teju will tell you about how unless she was fully prepared she would not attempt a mock test or she would be reluctant to attempt it. uh what <laughs> what would your mantra be attempt it come what may just see how it goes personally for me i always wanted to attempt tests because um, my main uh, logic behind attempting mock tests was it exposes you to the entire spectrum of you know the, of what papers can be you will if you write tests regularly you will be exposed all the way from very easy to very hard paper and very you know questions so then you know no matter what comes in the exam you won't be taken aback like it's a very unsettling thing you know if you are exposed to something new on the day of the exam it totally yes. throws you off track so this is where i believe that you know writing mock test practice tests and all helps because you feel prepared for anything no matter what it is you have a strategy like from the time you wrote a difficult exam you know how to approach that kind of a paper you learn from the mistakes you made that time so that way i think it's important but at the same time you know it's common that if you aren't prepared well and you don't score you feel yeah. demotivated and also i think there also it's a bit based on you know personal preference like for me i was uh, somewhat confident at least in my preparation so i wanted to write as many tests and course as possible to get as much experience as possible but if you truly feel that you aren't ready for it then it's okay to take you know some time off from tests to you know work on your mistakes your shortcomings you know but personally i do feel that it is important to write tests maybe not all the time but it is important to have that kind of exposure and practice right uh, how many hours would be there or is it possible to quantify that this many hours at least on a minimum a student who is aspiring for neat or even the je should actually write uh, should actually follow uh that's different like you must have read so much about toppers putting in 12 hours a day 14 hours a day and all and i personally have immense respect i look at them from like a, a like in almost god like perspective to be able to do that kind of thing because i know it's not next to impossible it is impossible for me i know i can't do that but mm-hmm. all i'm saying is like you know each person with their own abilities and limitations it's mm-hmm. not like a set time like for me aside from college hours i used to put in maybe 4 hours a day if i'm really lucky and you know i'm full, i'm like really focused and all maybe 5 but i can't manage anything beyond that okay. and i didn't try to push myself beyond i mean i tried but when i figured out that it wasn't working i didn't you know try and force myself into that because i knew it wasn't working for me i knew that i needed my break time my down time and that you know early morning late night studies is not my thing so i would just say you know that way be uh, bold enough to experiment find out what is the optimum time for you where you are able to make the best use of time it's no yeah. use studying very little and it's also no use studying too much so we yeah. don't try yeah. your best in that optimum middle uh, how did you deal with this entire year when there was so much of delay in the examination postponement uh, an exam which should have been held sometime in the month of may being conducted in the month of september how did you cope with the entire delay process it was kind of difficult especially at the start you know when it's like easy to get distracted on a mobile phone laptop and tv is like an at, at an arm's length right so yeah it was there was a bit of an adjustment period in the beginning i i still don't think i've overcome it completely if i'm being honest but yeah i was able to improve a little you know put in a little more time and be mm. able to make the most of whatever time i put in so one thing i'd like to say is that you know uh, like because of you know staying at home we all had more time in hand right that does not necessarily mean you have to take all that time and put it into studies you can use that time like some time extra if you can put in that's great but also make sure you make time there for your own interests and hobbies you know keeping in touch with family and friends all yes. those things are equal contributors to hmm. uh, any person is doing well in a competitive exam in my opinion um uh, i know it for a fact that you started off wanting to be a chemical engineer then there was yeah. a period when you wanted to be an army doctor and join the afmc uh and now i think your destination most likely is going to be aims in delhi right ah uh, yes yes now it's that so how does the journey over the next decade possibly because 
medicine is going to be a long long journey how 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 are you kind of mentally thinking about the journey over the next decade like in the future you're saying yes yes in the future like one thing i've learned from this you know when i look back and i see how much my interests and all have changed one thing i figured is you can't plan it like i mean five years ago i wanted to be a chemical engineer now i am doing this falls apart really so, so i don't think i can really plan that but you know based on my limit like as such i don't even think i realize what's the true scope of medicine as a subject so hmm. i think you know, that's something i'll figure out during mbbs but at present hmm. according to my limited knowledge and what i've seen in tv shows and all i think i'd be interested in something you know in surgery maybe i mean hmm. it's not set in stone because but that's what i have in mind right yeah. now yeah how how has your <laughs> how how has your younger brother been reacting to this now you have set the bar very high for him and i know it for a fact that even he is a topper at his level in school right Oh, yes, yes, he's and if I may say so myself, he's far more hardworking than me. If I uh-huh. think about it, but then we tried our best, you know, not to let it influence him. Like he already has made it clear to us that he does not want to do medicine. Uh, okay. Like he is completely clear on uh, what he wants to do, but he knows he doesn't want to do medicine. So that way, you know, we've given him the same. I mean, he is my parents, really. Mm-hmm. i have given him the same kind of freedom that they gave to me to choose my career paths and all that so yeah i mean he's just he's still ninth now so he definitely has a lot coming up ahead and i'm sure he'll be able to uh, deal with that pretty well yeah so basically uh, what i wanted to say was uh, you have been an achiever all along and you have been a great role role model uh, not just to your juniors but even to you know the students who have been studying with you who have known you for so many years one last tip that you would want to give to all the students who are listening in who are probably now in class 10 11 12 who may be dropping a year to attempt neat next year what would be the one thing that you would tell them uh if there's one thing i want to say it would be don't be afraid to experiment you know be bold even if you're repeat like if you're a repeater you have already had minimum 2 years of experience with it and if you're starting off afresh you have to and if you've done foundation in 3 or 4 right so you have enough time on your hands to you know experiment tinker around a little and uh, figure out what works for you so all i'd like to say is that you know uh, be bold be courageous so that you know what to do and uh, doesn't matter if others are doing it or not if it works for you you stick to it right okay in fact um, a friend of mine every dear friend of mine uh, to who i had said that you know there is this uh, classmate of my daughter who is likely to get a 720 on 720 this was a uh, conversation which happened about 10 days ago and he said no 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 i don't think anyone is getting 720 on 720 this year so when we got to know your result my first message was of course to your dad and the second message was to this friend of mine saying that he indeed has got a 720 on 720 so you have made a lot of us feel proud feel incredibly proud of what you have achieved so thank you very much for giving us all that joy and happiness so we are all, in that sense all your parents and having the pleasure of having known you over the past so many years thank you very much and all the best for the journey ahead thank you so much all the Enjoy best college life thank you